Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I'm going to be talking about what inspired an heir to murder. To talk about an heir to murder fully, I'm going to have to go back to 2004. And back then, post my granddad's death, me and my cousin were in this agreement that he would stay weekdays with my nan and I would stay at the weekends. Looking back at it, I wish we'd never done that because of a thing of prolonging grief and it's not really good for anybody but it happened and had it not happened I would not have had the upbringing and the knowledge of old television shows that I now do have. One show in particular that I am going to mention with regards to inspiration for the cosy crime novel is Last of the Summer Wine. Specifically, an episode from the very first trio entitled Spring Fever. In this episode, Compo is feeling very loved up and thus ends up completely changing his appearance, wearing a posh suit, going into Ivy's cafe and meeting this woman. I feel like she ended up being Nan in the royal family. Seeing Compo dress like that and seeing his interactions with the other two men and also being a fan of crime novels, I thought having a trio of older men solve crimes would be a brilliant idea for a series of cosy crime novels. I was staying at my nan's. I had no computer myself, but my nan had a computer upstairs. And so I went up there at 12 years old with no actual idea of what the crime was going to be or where this story was going to go. I created Arthur Sterling, Bill Newton and Inspector Clive Constable. They were going to be the three old men who solved crimes. I believe that I wrote two chapters way back when that I no longer have. The computer doesn't exist anymore. I don't have any printouts of it which is probably for the best. All I remember is that it started with Arthur in a cafe meeting his mates and talking about the death of his daughter-in-law and how his son was now taking over the family farm. I wrote those two chapters and back in the day I used to just write and if I wasn't feeling something I'd move on to something else. I never planned anything, it's you know at 12 years old you can't really expect much in terms of writing. It's very much still about experimentation with form and with things that you like. I hadn't read any crime novels at the time, I just watched a lot of TV shows surrounding crime. Murder, she wrote, Diagnosis, Murder, The Miss Marple Mysteries were on every Christmas, Hetty Wainthrop Investigates. All these things were a big part of my growing up. I left that and I didn't really think much of it and then I decided that I was looking at this completely incorrectly. Arthur was going to have been a retired detective and Clive was going to be the guy who was still in the force so Arthur still had a connection. A few years down the line I completely scrapped that idea. In the original there was this talk of a missing girl called Joanna. A few years down the line I decided I wanted to write something about the ragamuffin so still on this idea that Last of the Summer Wine was a very good base point for me to figure out these older characters. So that's what I did and I created Marmaduke Featherbow. It's important that we know what his original surname was. As we know from the title of the current book, he's actually now Marmaduke Featherstone. I just thought it felt more natural a name. I wrote three chapters of that one, so we're already one chapter better, but it was such a ripoff of Last of the Summer Wine. The bits about crime were difficult, but the bits that were just riffing off Last of the Summer Wine, writing comedic bits, they worked well. I planned an entire series of 10 books. I was at the age of 13 by then, so it's either a, yeah, it's a year after that. I was writing it at school because I still haven't got a computer at home then. I've, it's my one regret, I don't know where the notebook went. It was a very small notebook and I made plans for all 10 books and it was going to be a bit of a soap opera ending in the final book of this series. It was only going to be the 10 books and then the 10th book was going to go back to the first book. I didn't write 10 books and then I decided that I wanted to write something about a female detective 
And so I created Clementine Partridge. Did I write anything with her? Yes, I wrote a paragraph of Clementine Partridge. She was based on my mum's friend, Joan. She was very much a bohemian woman who drank green tea, having political protests all the time. All I wrote was her storming off into the farm shop because she'd found an eyeball in a jar of honey. I should point out at this time, it was all set in the town of Partridge. There wasn't any other name. It wasn't Partridge Muse at the time. It was just Partridge. Never went anywhere with that. Magdalena Valentine gave her a husband and she is now dead at the start of this book. These names have appeared in the Doris books because I knew I created the town very quickly when I was writing the Doris books and it kind of built up. So it was never really anything until I was writing Gar Doris. A few years back, I would say 2014, whilst I was writing Our Doris, I got the idea for Alice Valentine. And I was going to be writing my cosy crime novel after writing Our Doris. My plan, I, I wrote four chapters at the time and they sped through stuff incredibly quickly with little thought. Magdalena was still alive in the first draft. I couldn't find the wherewithal to write Alice's story. I hadn't created any sort of plan. I'd done what I used to do which was to write down snippets of dialogue to try and figure out Alice's character and that had never gone further. So I left that. I took the break from writing. I wrote Indisputably Doris. I planned to start the children's book and then whilst I was writing the children's book just at the, just before that about a year to 18 months before I started writing An Heir to Murder properly, I planned the entire thing out in a black notebook. I don't know where that is. I had this whole idea. I just started writing it in February 2018. And as you will have seen from my writing vlog from last year, I will link that. I just ended up really inspired to finish it. And I finished it over a period of three weeks in August. I was taking my laptop to work. I was just completely in the zone of this story. What happened when I was writing Alice Valentine was inspired by Writing Magazine. And years ago in Writing Magazine, I saw someone say about their crime novel, they realised what they had to do was kill their detective because their story wasn't moving forward. And as soon as I read that, it lit this light bulb moment in my head. And I thought that is exactly what I have to do. I have to kill Arthur. Strangely enough, Mavis Thistlethwaite, Doris's cousin, appeared in another draft I'd written of Arthur. And I never got anywhere with it. But again, I was trying to write the story of Arthur. It's incredibly dull. I submitted the first chapter to uni once. And I remember um, the tutor at the time just questioning things. And I go back and read it like, yeah, I understand. This is boring. This is boring as heck. I spent a page writing about how he made a cup of tea. Was still reading YA and I thought that all general fiction was incredibly mundane and prosaic and just went into what everyone was doing with their lives into minute detail. Mavis became a detective at the time. And then that all changed and I scrap everything. I cr decided to kill off Arthur. Arthur's last story would have seen him investigate the murder of Ronnie Butterworth, who is a character who appears in An Heir to Murder. And there are a lot of links back to all of the drafts that I have started, all the characters that I have created for this world over time. And there are so many people that I originally had as detectives or amateur sleuths. When I started the last draft in which I knew Arthur was going to be killed, I hadn't yet figured out who the killer was going to be. I realised it all because way back when in my, in one of my drafts, inspired by Emmerdale and Tom King's death, Arthur Sterling was going to be investigating the missing girl Joanna and see how it linked up to sheep rustling with Ronnie Butterworth whilst also investigating the murder of the green, the heir to the Greenfields estate. All three things are technically still in an heir to murder in some way. And that was because I wanted to reference the fact that these things were in the original story, but also realise that these characters have changed, the story has changed. And I think that it took me discovering Alice Valentine and planning this story out to realise that I had the history of this story, but I didn't actually have the story and the character 
that I required. So this is nowhere near Last of the Summer Wine. This isn't even inspired by Last of the Summer Wine anymore. It's not inspired by anything more than me seeing so many books about the older male detective gaining a young female assistant and solving crimes. And I wanted to twist it on its head a bit. And so you have a young female amateur sleuth. She ends up pulling a detective into her investigation to prove that she kind of doesn't hate old people, but it'll all make sense in the book. I wanted to twist a few things, and I think that I've done that. I don't really know what inspired Alice. I suppose she links back to the characters from my young adult novels of years ago, but I also feel like she's more fully formed and more realistic. I think she is a bit inspired by me, but she's also inspired by my sister. There is a bigger feeling of family in here that was definitely inspired by the fact that I grew up with quite an extended family. But it was also inspired by the fact that if you've watched Murder, She Wrote, you know that Jessica Fletcher was always going off to visit a cousin or nieces and nephews, and I thought, let's get this in there early. If we ever need to send Alice off anywhere for an adventure, she's going to have to have quite a big family. And so that was me just taking a bit of authority and crafting something in there that would help me in future. Meanwhile, there are also some characters from the earlier drafts who do appear in this book because I couldn't let them go. Um, there are subplots in here that I never expected to be in there um, because whilst I created Alice and she had her Auntie Magdalena, she didn't yet have parents. Whilst I was trying to figure out Whilst I was trying to figure out Alice's character, and I was writing these bits of dialogue, this character of Primrose, Alice's mother, just appeared. And again, I know who she was inspired by in my own life, but it also changed the way that I wanted to write her, because Alice is a bit pessimistic, and her mother can be a bit overbearing, but Primrose is just a delight to write. And so she appeared in more scenes because I just loved finally getting to write about this character who, unlike any of my other characters, just wants to see the best in everyone. And she wants to always, and I mean always, put something in a good light. So even if she dislikes something, she's searching for the positives. And I hadn't had a character like that before, so it was very strange to have her be this bit of an antithesis to every other female character that we meet in this book. Definitely nothing like I anticipated it to be for a cosy crime novel, but I think that's a good thing. I think that now no longer having any links to that very strange inspiration all those years ago and not stealing so many ideas from Last of the Summer Wine is a good thing and it feels very much more like my own story now and the way that I would do a crime novel as opposed to the way I thought a crime novel should be done. If you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.